country in my time. I've never seen anything like this. This exceeds anything even since the Vietnam War. The division in America during the Vietnam War was enormous. The chasm was insurmountable. But what Obama has done is opened up a chasm between virtually every group in the country, even blacks amongst blacks. The same way the Sunni fanatics have opened up a deeper chasm than ever existed between the Sunni and Shiite factions of Islam, Obama has opened up a schism within his own people, by the way, because he is a divider. That's how he conquered. Never make a mistake about that. And along comes a man with common sense like Donald Trump. And right away, National Review joins Jane Fonda. And there we go. The crony, uh, crony constitutionalists join in, in the fray, screaming and yelling and calling him names. You're not a conservative of Jacques Hughes. Jacques Hughes, you're not a pure Marxist. You're not a pure constitutionalist. You're not a pure this. You're not a pure that. That's what's going on right now. That passes for judgment. That's not what it's about. It's about defeating ISIS, as far as I can tell. You can put all other issues aside. Every one of them doesn't matter to me right now, because I'm going to tell you something that you don't want to hear. ISIS is here in this country. We know they're here. They're in every state. They're listening to the show. They're just deciding when and where to strike next. We have a doofus moron in the Department of Homeland Security who is more concerned with keeping his job than keeping America safe. We have a man in the White House who should have fired the head of DHS a long time ago, but won't because he's got exactly what he wants. Someone who won't do anything until he's, until he's told to jump uh, by the boss. There's only one independent at the upper level of this government, and that's the gentleman who runs the FBI. As far as I can tell, the head of the FBI, Mr. Comey, is as honest as they come. He's as good as they come. He's independent, appointed for 10 years. He has a tenured position. They can't fire him. And we're all waiting to see whether he will finally bring an indictment against. Well, he can't. He's done an investigation on Hillary Clinton's emails. But by what we all read, that unless an indictment is forthcoming from Loretta Lynch, who is our attorney general, there will be a massive, a massive problem inside this FBI. They might resign in Moss. The director of the FBI could resign unless there's an indictment. I mean, if you look at the list of people, Democrat, Republican alike, who have called for an indictment, you'd be shocked. It's not making it to, uh, to MSNBC, but the list is pretty long on this email scandal. Former attorney generals, Democrat, Republican, are saying you've got to do it. Former Secretary of Defense Robert Gates, admittedly Republican, said the odds are pretty high that Russia, China, and Iran accessed Hillary Clinton's server. Do you realize email exposed intelligence from human spying? Former Attorney General McCasey said criminal charge justified. This is a big deal. This is a huge deal. And she's skating. She's skating. Is she too big to fail? Is it the Democrat Party itself that's afraid that she's too big to fail and step down? Who will be left? The spritzer from Manhattan, the spritzer from the gutters of New York? No, they'll bring in Biden. Which, by the way, and I've said yesterday, if, if they bring in Biden, who's just a continuation of Obama, He'll be a much tougher candidate for Trump to defeat, incidentally, if Trump's the candidate. It'll be two older white guys running against each other, and that is going to create a bigger problem for Trump than you can imagine. You want me to break it down according to, uh, uh, on racial lines, I'll be happy to do that for you. I'm a sporting fan, and I watch what happens at boxing matches. Well, you think this is something new under the sun? Even when I was younger, I would see that they would pit one, one uh, uh, religion against another. And young. Then they pitch, pick the one race against another. They still do. You watch a big fight. It's a black versus an Hispanic, isn't it? By and large. And along comes the Ukrainians. No one, no one knows where the Russians came from. How could white guys wind up so tough? What do they eat up there? Icicles? Instead of giving them bottles of milk, they give them bottles of icicles in the Ukraine. Huh? How do these guys become so tough? Where are they from? Well, so, they, so then you got these fights now breaking down according to uh, ethnic and racial lines, the same way that the the, uh, the election will break down according to um, man versus woman, da 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 da. Well, but if it's Biden versus Trump, now you have a whole different ball game. 
Sanders is zero. Trump wins Drudge Super Poll with 36%. Sanders at 29%. Cruz at 19%, over a million votes. Anything could happen. The country's crazy right now. I wouldn't be surprised if that lunatic communist could win. It happened in France. I mean, even though this one is far less attractive than even Mitterrand. Mitterrand is known as the imbecile of Europe. And even he became a socialist leader of France. They elected that, that lunatic. He drove so many people out of France, that imbecile, by taxing the most productive and most successful citizens of France. And, of course, he gave us the attacks in Paris because of the weakness in uh, France, the same way that it will happen under Sanders. If you think that ISIS is rising here now and they're a threat, you're right. But God forbid Sanders ever became president. It would become a daily occurrence in this country, and he would not do anything to stop it. He'd be talking about climate change. He'd be talking about climate change. Bombs could be going off and buildings could be tumbling. And President Sanders would be saying, climate change is our number one problem. Well, now we had Obama last night. He awarded a billion dollars to local governments to build more climate-resilient communities. I'm going to ask you something as you listen to clip number one. Tell me where you think that billion dollars is going to go. Tell me who you think is going to get the construction contracts. Tell me who the contractors are who are going to get what Obama's offering in 01. Listen. From Little Rock to San Diego, cities are putting people to work, retrofitting buildings so that they're more mm. energy efficient. Mm. Earlier today, my administration mm. announced that we are going to award 13 cities, states, and counties $1 billion to help build more climate-resilient communities. Sounds good, doesn't it? Sounds like rubbish to me. Pork barrel spending, paying off his crony, crony capitalist friends for supporting him, paying them back with drywall contracts, paying them back with uh, replacing the glass in the building, replacing ceilings. Tell me how many companies are going to bid on these projects and tell me who these no-bid contractors are. And if you trace the money, my friends, it won't be too hard for you to find. It goes right back into the Senate and the Congress. And that leads us to uh, the time, which is 20, 19 minutes after the hour in the Savage Nation. I want to direct you to something fun, funny, and that is uh, a link that I had on my website today from the San Francisco newspaper about last night's last night's op uh, opening of the of the ballet. As in small, as in all small provincial cities, we all ha we have a ballet here in San Francisco. Oh yeah, we put on a good ballet. My God, as good as some of them shows back east. And all you got to do is go to the bottom of michaelsavage.com ladies if you want to have a laugh and my headline says it all out of town gowns in san francisco i've never seen anything as misfitting in my entire life women with horse legs wearing dresses that are made for them by by misogynists disguised as gown makers i've never seen anything they have no taste these are so gauche if you want to have fun you'll see patrons and ballad omanas mingled at the opening night gala out-of-town gowns in San Francisco on michaelsavage.com. One of the things I love about living in this, this uh, hypocritical liberal city of San Francisco is ridiculing them. Along the lines of what Voltaire did with Paris, they would say to him, how could you live here, Mr. Voltaire? He says, well, look at what I write. So if you look at michaelsavage.com and you see a link to the San Francisco newspaper of the gowns, the out-of-town gowns, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It is so playful to see these women. I mean, I would think that a day after these pictures come out, the amount of tranquilizers being prescribed by shrinks across uh, San Francisco is at an all-time high. Here's one, image 35. Uh, I won't re read the woman's name because I don't know it. Playful dress made by her seamstress during the San Francisco Ballet Gala at City Hall last night. You look at the dress, it looks like she took a tablecloth from an Italian restaurant and dyed it blue and white, stuck a coat hanger in it and put a dead bird on it. The next one, I can't even mention this one. Let's go to the next one. The guys say that I should look at Nancy Pelosi is in there as well. She has a great sense of couture, I've got to tell you. And uh, you can only see it for yourself. 
the kind of gown she wore and the earrings they show off and bags. And these are all liberals. They're all for the poor, by the way. But they're standing holding clutches that cost $25,000. As M carries a butterfly clutch by Chanel, probably feed an entire project full of people, you know, dinners for a year. Then you got all of the, well, okay. Here's a guy wearing a pair of slippers. Event designer J. Ricardo Benavides wore loafers that my producer, Robert, said looks like he stole Crown Royal, Seagram's Crown Royal bags and put them on his feet. Because that's what it looks like with his tuxedo. I mean, they're really in the real world. Event designer wore Ralph Lauren loafers. The gala celebrated the opening of the company's 83rd season. How out of town can you get? It's a pleasure, though, living in this provincial city. Gina P. carries a vintage Balenciaga handbag. That's her, her claim. To, I mean, they look at themselves the next day in the local newspaper. They got to get sick. They got to call the psychiatrist. He's doing house calls. The shrinks are doing house calls all over Pacific Heights today, I understand. Dispensing tranquilizers and Prozac at an alarming rate. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Why don't we do it in the road? <laughs> yeah, why don't we do it in the road? <laughs> no one will be watching us. Why From don't why, we do why it not do it in the road? road? <laughs> right. Right, right, right. Well, here we are today. Why not do it in the road? If it feels good, do it. Man, those are the, that's the adage. Now we got ISIS in every pot. Potheads in every kitchen. No man is an island, are you sure? They all think they're an island. In Obama's America, every man is an island. Everyone thinks that it's all about them. And nothing will ever touch them. Well, San Bernardino, yes. Boston, yes. But not them. It won't touch them. No. We at the opera? With our... Handbags and our gowns? No, won't touch us. We're, we're protected. We're the good people. We like immigrants. Yeah, right. Let's go to the callers. I got the best in the business. Peter on WJR, welcome to the Savage Nation. Uh, yes, I was born in San Francisco, raised in Mendocino uh, in the hippie time of the 60s and uh, the time of the cults and the communes and the, and the crazies. Jim Jones was my fifth grade math teacher. And uh, uh, Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I missed it. Jim Jones was the, the Jim Jones of Guyana? Yep, yeah, that guy, yeah. He was my fifth grade math teacher in Boonville. Wait, 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 wait whoa, whoa, whoa. In which school was this? Anderson Valley uh, Elementary School, which is between Boonville and Philo in Anderson Valley. Did he give out Kool-Aid at that time as well? No, no, he seemed like everybody liked him. Everybody said he's just a wonderful guy, you know. So, so you're a former hippie, I understand. Are you a, still a hippie, a liberal socialist to this day? No, no, no. I, I, you know, I was in the thick of it. I was one of the guys that helped put on Woodstock. I had ten guys working for me there. But I didn't like taking synthetic drugs, so I went to South America to take hallucinogenics with Indians and, and be with what I... Oh, you, whoa, 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 whoa. You took ayahuasca? I did. I made it up myself in the upper Amazon of Ecuador. That, that was a big trek. You know, the, 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 the Jesus Christ, sorry to use the phrase, the JC of that world was a great scientist from Harvard named Richard Evans Schultes. Have you heard his name? No, no, I haven't heard that name. Oh, you look up S-C-H-U-L-T-E-S. -E he was the father of the entire uh, hallucinogenic world, as used by shamans in the Amazon and other places. He tr he knew it from a from a from a medical you know social socio medical point of view. And I was always uh, t intimidated by that stuff. I didn't want to mess with my mind. Truthfully, I avoided psychedelics my whole life. Delicate, and. Uh... But uh, I went to live with the Indians because I thought of them as being the authentic human beings. I was raised under the philosophy of Rousseau, of, you know, trying to find the... Oh, and tell me, tell me what you found living with the, with the natives. Well, well, I found out that they had problems like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they also have, they get rheumatism and arthritis as well, even though they look hardy. They have similar ailments. I mean, all the ailments of us in the West uh, afflict them. It's terribly true. Yeah. And what happened was I ended up... Um, I uh, took up photography and I photographed minority and tribal peoples throughout South America and throughout uh, Asia, China, Tibet, Nepal. 
And what I, I became more and more conservative every year as I saw leftists really 